want to welcome you to another edition of Living Branch. We're thankful that you are able to join us. And we appreciate your presence. And we're just, you know, here to share the Father's Word and to help you to move forward in your walk and your journey. I tell you, sometimes it's a huge undertaking. When I say huge, uh, weeding out all the stuff that's not according to Torah, that doesn't line up. Because a lot of times we get consumed and bog ourselves down with subjects and subject matters and various things that really, in the scheme of things, is something for the Father to handle. So again, we say Shabbat Shalom to all of our Mishpachah all across the world. And we appreciate you joining. So today we're going to continue on with wisdom. Now for some of you, this, you know, might be a refresher. Um, for others, it, you know, might serve a more um, diligent purpose. Because one of the things that you'll notice as you continue in this journey that as you begin to learn you'll gain knowledge and it'll be over time and sometimes people tend to want it so fast they want I mean they want it in a hurry but you've got to make sure that you when you get knowledge that you use it properly and that you get the right source of knowledge. So let's go and we're going to um, pray. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohinu Malak HaAlam. Father, Todah Rebah for Shabbat. Todah Rebah for all of my Mishpachah that are out there that are logging on. And those that will even watch it this lesson in the future. We ask you, Father, to make this lesson purposeful for us, that we might pull from your wisdom, your understanding. And we say, just told our Rabbi, Father, you, you do things so well, and we appreciate you in all of your doings. Now, Father, be with us, guide us, lead us, in the name of Mashiach, the immediate of this covenant, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah, Amen. Now the first part, of course, what are you doing? So you're going to find that there, as we discussed last week, there are a couple of elements in this, this that you have to, you have to grasp. Because it's not simply just enough to have the information at your disposal. And we're going to read, we're going to go to quite a few places. And, and we will see the Father's doing. This is really going to be helpful. Okay. So we have to read this again. It's very important because in it, it states what is our wisdom and our understanding. Now, therefore, hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to them, uh, for to do them, see, that's to do that you may live and go in and possess the land which Yahuwah Elohim of your fathers giveth you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish aught from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahuwah Elohim which I command you. Your eyes have seen what Yahuwah did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor Yahuwah, thy Elohim, has destroyed them from among you. But you 
that do cleave unto Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall live uh, our life, every one of you this day. Because I have taught you the statutes and judgments, even as Yahuwah, my Elohim, commanded me. And you shall do so in the land whether you go to possess. Keep, therefore, and do them. So that's the two things you got to have in your life. You got to be keeping and doing, keeping and doing. And we're going to go over that today in this lesson. For this is what your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statues and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is so great who has Elohim so nigh unto them as Yahuwah our Elohim is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statues and judgments so righteous as all this law or Torah, which I set before you this day. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thy forget the things which thy eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart. So he's trying to get these statues and these judgments on your heart, these instructions, all the days of your life. But teach them thy sons and thy, and thy sons' sons. Okay, so we can, we can see this is very important for us, not only individual, but as a nation. Okay, so we're going to look at some, the definition again, um, and this is what I gave you last week. Let's go over to our scripture and look here. Okay, so we have here, let's, ah, uh, now we got it. So what we're going to do right here, you see is chok ma, which is the word for wisdom. Okay, now what I want to do, I have some other places I thought that would be useful for our purpose so let's um, I'll use this and I can always bring bring this back so I want to read this to you um, it's out of the complete word study dictionary of the Old Testament for a deeper understanding of the word. Because when I was going back over and looking at this, I was like, man, this, this is some pretty good stuff here. So this is what they, uh, and we're going to look at the root word first. So I'll bring it up. Um, okay, this is the root word, which is ha kham. Okay, it says a verb meaning to be wise, but um, to act according to wisdom, to make wise decisions, to manifest wisdom. Now that that hit home. Okay, because I want you to think. When you make your decisions, are you what are you making your decision based off of? What's your sourcing? You know, are you making your decisions based off of your understanding or what you get from his word? What's your sourcing? So I, I like what they said, a verb mean to be wise to act according to wisdom. To make wise decisions to manifest wisdom. 
This word is used to convey the act of instructing, which if received bring, brings wisdom. Okay, now we're going to go to, and they give a couple of references here. Job 35, verse 11. Okay. And it says, Who teacheth us more than the beast of the earth, and maketh us wiser than the fowl of the air? Then they also give another reference, which I think this one is real good. This, this one should hit home. Um, 105, Psalms 105, verse 22. To bind his princes with pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. Okay, the wise activities that derive from such instructions. Okay, and then the scriptures that's referenced is Proverbs 6, verse 6. Go to the ant thy slugger, consider her ways, be wise which having no guide, overseer, or ruler. So you can see here is our root word. Then he also lists um, Proverbs 8, verse 33. Hear instructions, be wise, and refuse it not. The way of conduct contrary to that of the wicked. So the reference for that is Proverbs 23, verse 19. Hear thou, my son, and be wise. Guide thy heart in the way. Okay, so Derek. So there's a way that we're supposed to be in. The wisdom manifest in the animal kingdom. In, reflex, in reflexive sense, the verb implies the tangible manifestation of wisdom. The exaggerated precept, perception of one's own wisdom and the cunning activity of the deceiver. The psalmist declares that Yahuwah delights in the dis in dispensing wisdom to the simple minded. That's in Psalms um, chapter 19 verse I can't put it together so give me one second. Okay, it says the law, now look here, it does say Torah, of Yahuwah is perfect. Tamim, converting the soul. Wow. Converting, shuv, the soul, the testimony of Yahuwah is sure, making wise the simple. Pitai. Making wise the simple. Some good stuff right there. Okay, now we're going to look at this one. Um, which is, which is actually taken from. They're pronounced the same. The difference is, You'll see here, this one has a, sh a long, a short, short vowel. This has two long vowels. So in ancient times, they, they would have been pronounced a little different, but in our modern day biblical Hebrew, uh, we pronounce them the same. So this right here is a kometz. This is a patak. That's up under the, the letter, the cough. Okay. 
So let's look at, let's read some from that. This one. Okay, now this is an adjective. Okay, the first one we read was a verb. This one is an adjective. An adjective meaning wise. This word is used to describe one who is skilled or experienced. It was used in the physical arena to describe those men who were skilled as builders. As craftsmen of all sorts, as precious metal workers, those women who spun fabrics, and there's a, a reference um, there if you go to Exodus 35, verse 25. This word was used in the social arena to express those who were the leaders of the day who could interpret dreams, who were able to rule, who knew the law, who were counselors. In the personal arena, this word denotes skill in living, which was embodied in Solomon like no other before or since. The wise person is the one who learns, who he's to rebuke and who speaks properly okay so this is the adjective okay now we're going to look at hokma this is the word that um we're we've been um talking about wisdom this is a feminine noun so this is the one we're looking at now so we have a noun, I mean a verb, a noun, excuse me, we have a verb, an adjective, now we have a noun, okay? A feminine noun meaning wisdom, skill, experience, shrewdness. This is one of the uh, wisdom words that cluster in Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Job, and other wisdom literature scattered throughout the Tanakh. The high point of this word and its concept is reached in Proverbs 8, verse 1. So let's look at that. Proverbs 8, verse 1. Doth not wisdom cry and understanding put forth forth her voice then it tells us then it also goes to verse 11 for wisdom is better than rubies and all the things that may be desired are not to be compared to it then we got a verse 12 I wisdom dwelleth with prudence find out knowledge of witty invention So it goes on in Proverbs chapter 8, verse 22 through 31, wisdom is personified. It is Elohim's gracious creation and is thus inheritance in the created order. Elohim alone knows where wisdom dwells and where it originated. No other living being possessed this knowledge about wisdom for human Humans, the beginning of wisdom and the supreme wisdom is to properly fear and reverence Elohim. Elohim is the sovereign, the creator and giver of wisdom. He employed wisdom as his master craftsman to create all things. Rulers govern wisely by means of wisdom provided by Elohim. Wisdom keeps company with all the other virtues, prudence, knowledge, and discernment. Yeah, I like, see, <laughs> wisdom keeps good company. So we can look at the company you're keeping 
and tell what kind of wisdom you're walking in. Wisdom ordained and created by Elohim manifests itself in many ways in the created universe. It is expressed as a technical capacity. It becomes evident in experience and prudence as evidence in wise women who fear Yahuwah or in wise kings. Wisdom is in general and worldly wisdom in particular are universal to mankind created in the image of Elohim. So this is pretty pretty good information. I, I like how they personify the definition for wisdom. So let's go back here. We'll look here, Hokma. I just want to We'll just take a couple of places. So, and what I, this is this is talking about the skill that that people used here. But where I want to take you, Notice that Yahusha or Joshua, the son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as Yahuwah commanded Moshe. So there are many great examples, but some of the ones I particularly like where the word is used is in Psalms. So I want you to think with because because remember it's his instructions that you're speaking. So people always want to do things according to their knowledge or their understanding. But what I've what I've done and, and I pray It'll be one of the things that you undertake. I've started to ask the Father to make me more like him. Okay, and what does that mean? If I'm asking him to make me more like him, then my knowledge and my wisdom and my understanding are void. I'm looking to his instructions, what he's written, to his to examples that he's given in his writings and drawing from that and asking him to give me the understanding so that I can apply it in where we you know in our current situation today so notice here in Psalms I told you I, I like the Psalms in Proverbs when it comes to wisdom the mouth of the righteous speak of wisdom his tongue talketh of judgments. So consider this. When you hear something, if you were if you were a judge in biblical times, you didn't just hear it and then condemn or convict the person. You have to do diligent inquiry. You have to hear both sides of the story. You know. And you have to go and find witnesses and do everything before you render a judgment or a decision. So I have to ask you, when you hear stuff, do you assume that it's correct? Or do, if you want to know if it's correct, you go to the source. And if it's two people contending, you hear both sides of the story. You see if there's witnesses. And then you can make a righteous judgment. You can't just hear one side of the story and say, oh, I know he did it. Oh, I know she did it. You got to hear all the information. <laughs> okay. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto Chokmah, wisdom. 
O Yahuwah, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom has thy made them all. The earth is full of thy riches. Now here they translated Hokmah's wits. That just show you um, how King James all over the place. Okay, the fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of wisdom. And good understanding have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding. The fear of Yahuwah is the beginning of knowledge, but fools dis despise wisdom and instruction. So, I mean, it's so many uh, that, you, that you can find here. Uh, you go to the book of James, it tells you if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask it of Elohim, who gives it. So, I mean, it's so much, okay? And don't forget, we still got to do understanding, but we won't do that today. So the two things we have to do, we have to keep, which is Shamar, and do Asa. Okay, so for this, I want to jump back over and I want to go to Genesis, the third chapter. So what I'm, what I'm after here, this is our first example of where his wisdom was given okay and what we're looking for okay I want to go to, before this one, I want to go someplace else. Um, let's go to chapter 2, verse 8. And Yahuwah planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Okay? So, he created the man, then he put him in a garden. And then if you go down to Verse 15, and Yahuwah Elohim took the man and put him in the garden to dress it, avad, and to shamar. And he gave him a commandment. He said, and Yahuwah Elohim commanded the man saying of every tree of the garden thou mayest eat freely but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die okay this was to be his wisdom and his understanding what Ab Yahuwah told him don't eat of the knowledge you can eat everything else but don't eat of the knowledge of the tree of uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil that was his wisdom okay and this is the first first example for us so let's look at how they handled that wisdom so Genesis 3 because what happens for a lot of us we have that wisdom he's given us his instructions and his commandments but we don't do we don't guard it we don't follow it and it's right there at our disposal okay so 
in following this, there's going to be contention. Or there's going to be some factions that are going to try to pull you away from his wisdom and from his commandments. Okay, and that's where Hasatan comes in. So the serpent asks us a question. And we've been over this many times. And that question is designed to pull you away from his instructions, from the wisdom that Elohim has given you in his instructions. So the woman replied, I'll just read what the serpent said. And he said unto woman, Yea, has Elohim said, You should not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, You should not eat it, neither shall you touch it. Okay, now this was added. Okay, remember he told us don't add to lest you die. And the serpent said unto the woman, because when, you, when, when you're dealing with the enemy, if the enemy sees that you, because he knows it too. He knows the word. If he sees that you have added something to what the father has said, it opens up a door of opportunity for him to slip in. So you got to give it right back just like the father gave it. Okay, don't add to it. Don't subtract from it. He told us don't eat of the knowledge of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Bam, that's it. But when the serpent sees that you're adding something to it, he knows that's he knows. Okay, this is something I need to keep poking at because they added to it, so I, I see an opportunity. I see something that's lacking. I see that they don't quite grasp what he said because they added something else to it. So something else is out there dangling in the wind that affords the enemy an opportunity. Okay, and the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For Elohim doth know in the day that you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as Elohim, knowing good and evil. So notice what this does. This causes her to pull from a different source. She's no longer pulling or cleaving to the words that the father gave to Adam that were delivered to her. She doesn't pull from that anymore. And, and Adam doesn't pull from it because he's right there with her. Because it goes on and said, and she turned and gave him to her husband with her. Now notice, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that was pleasant to the eyes. So now she doesn't, she reverts back to her own senses instead of using the wisdom that's his instructions that Elohim gave her gave them in the first place and she took other fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat and the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves apron. aprons. So here we have it. You, you got to see this for what it's worth. When it comes to the Father's commandments, your opinion, your understanding, your feelings and your emotions have no place. What do I mean by that? He's looking for you to give him back what he gave to you. 
In other words, if he told you don't steal, he's looking for you to give him back. Don't steal. Don't add, don't say, I stole because I was hungry. Sounds good, but, or I stole because of other factors. Or I committed adultery because she looked so good. Or she coerced me, or what, or he coerced me, or whatever the case. He's looking for you to give him the action back that he spoke in his commandments. Don't commit adultery. He's looking for you not to commit adultery. He's looking for you not to bear false witness against your neighbor. But see, when the enemy sees that you are adding something to uh, to Elohim's word, oh, you know, you know, he said, don't commit adultery, but she's not living with him or he's not living with her, but they're still married. So now he's like, okay, they added something in there. Let me take this as an opportunity to capitalize on the situation. And that's what the enemy does. That's what life does. It capitalizes on the situation when you add to or subtract from his commandments. Okay. Okay. So let's look at this. Keep, or some say guard, and Asa do. This is what you have to do. So Shamar, to hedge about as with thorns, to guard, generally to protect, attend to, Beware, circumspect, take heed. So, whenever you guard something, back in those times, they would use the prickly bushes to keep out predators. Not only did it keep the predators out, but it kept the sheep safe and secure. So, if you want to be safe and secure, you have to make sure that you hedge about yourself. And this again is from the Complete Word Study Dictionary of the Old Testament, or the Tanakh. Shemar. Okay, a verb meaning to watch, keep, to preserve, to guard, to be careful, to watch over, to watch carefully over, to be on one's guard. The verb means to watch, to guard, to care for. Adam and Hawa were to watch over and care for the Garden of Eden where Yahuwah had placed them. Cultic and set apart things were to be taken care of diligently by the priests. The word can suggest the idea of protecting. David or Daoud gave order to keep Absalom safe. Yahuwah keeps those who look to him. The word can mean to simply save or to preserve certain objects or items. Objects can be delivered to one another person for safeguarding. The word can also mean to pay close attention to. Eli the priest continued to observe Hannah's lips closely as she prayed. Closely Related to this meaning is the connotation to continue to do something as when Joab maintained his siege on the city of Rabbah. The verb also indicates caring for sheep. 
The Hebrew word means to maintain or to observe something for a purpose and is followed by another verb indicating the purpose or manner. As in following example, Israel was to observe the law of Yahuwah so as to do them. Balaam had to observe accurately what he had been charged with. In Numbers 23.12, And Israel was responsible to keep the way of Yahuwah and walk in it. So, this word, to hedge about. So, it guards against what's on the outside. That lion that's walking to and fro, seeking whom he may, may divide, as a roaring lion, they call it. But it keeps safe what's on the inside. So let's make sure that we are keeping his commandments, guarding them, because they're going to be your wisdom. Okay, then to do is to do or to make in it the broadest sense and the widest application. So it's an action that's reflected where you are executing. You're proactive in keeping these commandments. Asav. Asa. So let's see here. Let's read a little bit what it says. And the verb meaning to do, to make, to accomplish, to complete. This frequently used Hebrew verb conveys the central notion of performing an activity with a distinct purpose or moral obligation or good or goal in view. Particularly, it was used in conjunction with Elohim's commands. It prescribes the process of construction, engaging in warfare, the yielding of grain, observing a religious ceremony, and the completion of something. So we can see that this is on purpose. I do what I do on purpose because it's written in his commandments. So that's, you have to have those. And I will give you a little wisdom. If you do them, you will get wisdom and understanding. Okay? So, you know, I, I don't want to seem like I'm beating a dead horse. But we got to keep and do his commandments. I mean, there's so much uh, stuff out there where where people, their lives are just in a mess. That if they would just execute his commandments and do what's righteous, it would eliminate a whole lot of mess. So what's your focus? Your focus is the wisdom of Yahuwah. His wisdom. Get in his Tanakh. Get in that Torah. And learn his wisdom. Because that's going to be wisdom and your understanding. So what we'll do next week. Next week we're going to go over understanding. So let's pray for fear of Yahuwah. Because it all starts right there. All right, let's pray, Ms. Baka. Father, I say Toda Rabba for the understanding you've given us and for the knowledge. I will praise you a thousand millennia. You're worthy of the praise. I honor you, Father. 
I thank you because you're set apart, Father, and because you're set apart, we're supposed to be set apart. Now, Father, instill in us the fear of Yahuwah. Father, I, I just admonish everyone to esteem your word highly. And I thank you for the word of Elohim that guides us, that shows us how to live, that gives us direction. In everything that we do, let us seek your face. Let us seek your wisdom, your understanding. Let us look for examples. Father, and let us even ask for wise counsel. Toda Reba for all that you do, Father. We love you. We appreciate you. We esteem you. We praise you. We thank you for Yahusha, the mediator of this covenant. And we ask you, Father, to help us to walk upright, that we'll be worthy of that day when you come back. Toda Reba, name of Mashiach Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. All right, Ms. Bukai, if you got questions, you can email me. Uh, there's still, uh, if I don't email you back right away, sometimes uh, depending on what you email me, I want to think on it, pray on it, and, and make sure I'm giving uh, you the heart of the Father. Um, some stuff is easier than others. Uh, but what I will do is just let you know I received the email that I will respond after prayer. Um, but if he, if he, if it's something that's more difficult and he doesn't give me anything, I'll let you know that too. Um, his word is what our aim is to be as far as, you know, how we direct people and how we instruct. Now, if you want those resources, um, I'm not sure. I can't remember where. I think I have this, the complete word study dictionary of the uh, Old Testament or Tanakh. I'll put it in the store um, for those of you that might want a copy. That way you'll know, the, get the best price and know where to get it from. So uh, this is the store address up here. Now, headgear. Just This is just so you know. If if you've been looking for headgear with the Father's name on it, this is the address where you can get it from. Okay, it has his Paleo Hebrew name on it. So you can pop over there and um, not on the Shabbat though, but just to let you know it's there. Okay, and for those of you that have children, hey, make sure you get your kids. Uh, the Hebrew Ten Commandments, paperback and in Kindle. It's a good inst good instruction tool. So it goes over the Ten Commandments. It gives you pictures. That's what kids need. You explain the pictures for them, and you build the pictures uh, in their in their heart and mind to instill His commandments. Same thing for the Passover story. Um, you. Give them the Passover story and it shows them, you know, and gives them insight. And those pictures go a long way for children. Okay, if you haven't already, get your bookmarkers. We just, we sent out quite a few this week um, to people that have committed to passing them out. Um, one young lady passes them out with, with Bibles. I'm like, well, hallelujah, she said. That the real Kodesh told us to pass them out with Bible. So, hey, you know, told out to the Father for moving. Now, um, if you like to support us, you can do that a couple different ways. You can do it by mail. Uh, you can do it by PayPal. Or we have our online giving tool, which will bring you here. You'll notice that it looks a little different what I did. Uh, I put the same logo in the background so that people go here, they'll know they're at the right place. So um, you can do, um, use all your different accounts here. And it is secure. Because with all the stuff going on today, we want to make sure that things are secure. So 
this was part three. We're going to have a part four next week, which will, Father William will be on understanding. Because it's going to be our wisdom, wisdom, our chukmah. It's going to be our understanding. So make sure you tune in and um, pass it along. And I hope this lesson has been helpful. You know, like I said, some stuff might seem like it's repetitious, but this is what we're supposed to rehearse this stuff constantly, constantly. Go over these principles. That's what we need, you know, so that we don't forget it. Always have it before us. All right, Ms. Bakai, I love you all. This is Maureen, my dad, Yahoo, saying unto you.